Hey everybody, it's Jillian. Happy Monday. It's already Monday. Can you believe it? I, for one, can't believe it's already Monday. And it's becoming easier to write this book because I'm just really, like, overwhelming myself with all the information. I eat, breathe, and sleep this whole book. Um, and that's exactly how I do things until I achieve a particular goal. And not everybody can do that because they have so many things that, that do take them in different directions. And so a lot of people are very much diverted and split apart. But, you know, if you have a specific priorities and it becomes easier and you just focus on those priorities without getting distracted by everything else. Like my priority is this book, my dog and my husband and this house. Okay, that's my priority. Everything else is going to the wayside. And so that's how I keep focus. And when I was studying for different exams, when I was in the insurance world and I had to pass state exams, everything took a back seat. And it was like me and my dog and then my husband down the road. Like not down the road, but like I know he had to eat, so we had to make dinner. So yeah, and so I would just sit and I would just study, 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 take the dog out. Like every two hours I get to take the dog out, study, study, study. And it was like, you know, it's like a type of brainwashing. And so, you know, but I always seem to pass exams whenever I did that, whenever I crammed so hard. But this is not cramming. This actually is taking in this information and breathing it and pooping it and just living it and having it be able to roll off my tongue like there's nothing like it's nothing and that's what i want you guys eventually to come to go down the road or eventually see that down the road where you can live and breathe and understand jilly juice on such a level that it becomes easy and rolls off the tongue like it's second nature and so i figured out another trinity of existence and that is events and then life and death and life and death have very specific meanings and meanings as in definitions, not meanings, because definition is how, how, what is life defined by and what is death defined by. And then the meaning is the perception though. People use the word meaning like, Oh, what does this word mean? And then people put their perception of it instead of going to the dictionary definition and looking up terms and concepts, people will apply their meaning to what they think something means instead of the actual definition. So meaning and definition are not really the same, but they're used interchangeably as if they were, which then leads to a lot of confusion because of assumptions, okay? So the treaty of existence is events, which basically is the physical manifestations that lead up to life and the physical manifestations that lead up to death. And that's it. There's events, there's life, and there's death. And so what our life is, are the meanings applied to the death process that then people have the assumption that the, the death trajectory is a life existence when actuality it's a death trajectory and these are all the events that led up to it and there you go and so yes there the politics religion and science all stem from the meanings applied to the events that led up to a specific type of outcome and so that's the confusion that's the the Tower of Babel is all the different meanings apply to specific sequence of events. Okay? And so then there's this thing called chemical resistance to evolution. Now, like, what is chemical resistance? Like, what is that? Well, you know, you could say that a chemical resistance to something is when there is a reagent that's applied the original entity that had the reagent applied to it still stayed in the same form. And there's an actual, let's see, that was my paraphrasing, but there is an actual definition. Um, chemical resistance is the ability of a polymeric material, okay, to maintain its original properties after being exposed to an indicated chemical reagent environment for a specific time period. So what do you think your lifespan is? Your lifespan with the end result as death is a chemical resistance. It's the ability of a polymeric material. This is your life if you believe that people should die. To, 
it, it's chemical resistance is the ability of a polymeric material to maintain its original properties after being exposed to an indicated chemical reagent environment for a speci specified time period. Okay, so what do you think vaccines are? What do you think um, the different antibiotics are? What do you think anything that that is temporary that gives you that meaning or that relative meaning of what peace is because evolution is pretty it can be pretty um chaotic sometimes and so when you are applying something to the body to make you resist evolution though you're still dying but you're not dead so chemical resistance is the fact that you're still able to be exposed to a virus you're not going to evolve and so you're not going to feel any kind of sickness. And if you feel sickness, then guess what the anti-vaxxers say? Oh my God, I feel sick. We not, we should not feel sick. So, uh, I'm not taking the vaccine and I'm, and I'm going to take all these therapeutics or remedies to stop the evolution. So it's not going to matter really when you think about it what people do out there if they're not doing jelly juice because and that's what the system that knows that it the system that is trying to scale down a population with your permission is the fact that no matter what if people are characterizing symptoms as something to stop like immediately and not understand what they are then they will not do any of the the public health therapeutics and they'll go to their holistic professional or allopathic professional and start taking out organs start applying reagents that are going to keep them in a cured state of decline until there's nothing left and then they're all happy that they're that they're that they've given themselves permission to die in the way that they want to die <laughs> and that's essentially what's going on in the in the anti-vax world is they want to be able to pass away in the manner that they see fit which is then already the system's, you know, intention because nobody is, you know, really promoting indefinite life or immortality. But what is immortality? That's the thing. Now, this is what I was thinking about. Like, okay, we have this meaning or this, this perception of what immortality is. And even I, you know, have this kind of like assumption of what immortality is. But when you think about it, immortality is like a super responsibility. I mean, when you think about it, okay, if you only had, let's say, the, 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 the gods, the gods, the immortal gods came down with all of their, with all their people and all their, all their gods, you know, the, the biochemistry, the subjective biochemistry, like the Artemis and Diomedes, whatever, and Zeus and Hera and Athena and Poseidon and Hercules, all of that. When you put all the gods together, it'd be a crowd of people, okay? And then those crowds of people would then intermingle together and procreate and have a bunch of demigods and then a bunch of mortals, right? Okay, so now you want to build an infrastructure. Now you want to build a civil civilization. Well, if everybody was immortal and there really wasn't any innovation, but everyone was immortal, and what is immortality is when you're able to do jelly juice, right? And you don't expose yourself to TV, to other people, really, and you just do jelly juice. Somehow you have the jars, you've magically appeared all the jars, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, you know, um, you wouldn't know what to bring into, t you don't even know, I mean, how would you even know about the jars, right? You'd have to know about jelly juice in order to bring up jars magically. So immortality really is not magic. It's really the ability to maintain one's existence on an indefinite basis. And then magic really is the spells of what it of what then can bring to something that you think of into existence. And people are thinking like it's magic is like you wiggle your nose and like bewitched and then everything is like organized. No, it's it's if that if that were the case, if we can wiggle our nose and have everything be at our at our fingertips, like right now. You get somebody who's immortal, right? Doing the JG, they're immortal, and they're like, I want like an Xbox, and I want a ten thousand square foot house, and I want a barbecue, and I want fifty cars, and I want my own business, and I want this, this. And then you have all these immortal people who are so greedy and consumeristic and have all this power that it would be freaking chaos. No one would understand balance. You would have so many overconsumptive immortal people 
who are so greedy, who hasn't learned balance because they never learned balance to begin with to become immortal. They haven't earned that right. And so they're using their powers, using their magic to appear things that are going to be, you know, they're going to be that they don't need. Okay, so I mean, so then they're like, okay, well, I want the latest Xbox. Well, who had to devise the latest Xbox? Well, it had to be innovation. It had to come from a group of people who were not immortal, who are who are driven to succeed, who had the motivation, the innovation, all of that to then create Xbox Two, then create Xbox Three and Xbox Four, for an order for an immortal person to want an Xbox One, Two, Three, Four, Five. It had to be converted and innovated and then created for it to exist and then sold on the open market for them to someone to get, you know, um, compensation for their innovation and all the work. And then it, the work has to be spread out across the land. And so, yeah, so it's like immortality isn't really like a magical thing. I mean, this is immortality right here. I still got to work for what I have. I still got to maintain status quo. I still have to go get the jar. Well, I have jars. I still gotta go get, I, don't have, I have salt. I still gotta go get the cabbage if I need to do more J juice, but I really don't need to. I still have to get food. I mean, immortality is not just a magically appearing food and there it is, right? Or else everybody would be immortal. Okay, no, it's it, it's the ability to take something from the earth. It's alchemy. It's taking something from the earth, putting the things together, and here is the outcome. And this outcome is going to then align with my purpose. And what is the purpose? It's whatever you you know, apply meaning to, to an object or a person, place, or thing. Okay. And, and that's, and, that, and that's the thing is we, we've been, we've been exposed to like so much Disney and so much of the, the movies and, and yes, the movies are very much like predictive programming, but the time frame in between wishing something and having it appear is so short. I mean, maybe there's a holodeck, maybe there, you know, there is the Star Trek way of beaming someone from like in a spaceship down to here. But at this point, have we earned that right yet? We have 7 billion people who don't even know what, you know, don't even know how to keep themselves, you know, from getting cancer, how to keep themselves alive past a certain point. There are 7 billion people who are so resistant to, ch resistant to change. They don't deserve to have something as easy as beaming themselves up to a spaceship. They would take those kind of powers and they would misuse them. Then you have a bunch of really, you know, then you have people like the, the Lord of the Rings, where the ring gets in the hands of somebody evil who then, you know, just does some crazy stuff. And so everything, so things like immortality is not something that should really be given to everybody. Immortality is chosen, is given to those who know how to use that power in a way that's going to be promoting innovations, indefinite life, promoting balance and relative peace promoting the understanding of evolution. Immortality is not for everybody. And I and, and now I understand because I'm going to tell you if we were if we were given immortality way at the get go, we wouldn't exist. There would be only a certain amount of people in this population of 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 the world. Um and then every and then would, would there be an Xbox? Would there be TV? Would there be actors? Would there be paintings and art and different political parties. No, all the diversity in our society came from, yes, the death process came from the, the agony came from suffering. It came from a lot of stuff that we're like, Oh my God. And so when I'm right, I'm writing right now. And last night it, it came to me when you write, I tell you what, you see a lot of different things. And yesterday I was writing about immortality, about the, like how did the Greek gods then turn into potentially like the Vatican and the Freemasons, and who are the Vatican, like who, you know, the people with Jesus, like who are these people? And where do they, I mean, we knew where they came from, the Greek gods came from other planets, but then who was Jesus back then? He was probably some, probably another god that was relatively, you know, well, it was like somebody like me, let's just pretend, let's just pretend I'm Jesus, just pretend, I'm not saying I am, but let's pretend I'm like the Jesus, and I was able to figure out how everything worked, and I understood what it took and all this stuff. And then there was people that didn't like what I had to say and they wanted to put me on the cross, like back in the Roman days. That's probably essentially what happened to Jesus. I mean, he was he could be mortal or immortal and immortality is based upon the actions you take to keep your body going. And so if somebody stops you from taking those actions to keep your body going, then you become mortal that quick, right? 
It's based upon somebody else with malintention and then this lack of being able to protect himself and the people he surrounded himself with. And so, thank God I live in America. Thank God I have my own firepower. Thank God I have my own way of protecting myself. Because when you think about it, from way back in antiquity, those that had a, a different way of looking at things because of their biochemistry, and maybe they were immortal at the time, um, they instantly became immortal and, or mortal, and were their life was cut short. And surprise, that's why you see all the mummies, okay, in in in, um, in Egypt. Like, why were the gods that that like the Anunnaki or whatever? I mean, how, how, why were they mummified? I mean, wouldn't you think that the gods, if they were immortal, so why were the why were the Egyptians mummified? Why do they even die? Why die? Was that some kind of way to, to, to create a reality or create a meaning or create some kind of, um, I don't know, belief system that at some point you should die, we're going to go and make you suffer and extract all your gifts and utilize them in, for innovation? I mean, really, what's the point? I mean, when you think about a very rich person, they can't just sit by their pool all day and sip mimosas. They're going to want to do stuff. They're going to want to be something. They're going to want to, you know, be all whatever out there. I mean, how long can you sit by the pool and sip mimosas and eat, you know, sushi every single day? Right? So being rich really isn't like all about sitting by the pool and, you know, and traveling around the world. Because if, if you have a plane and you can get to, to Italy in like five minutes and you've done that 500 times, how old does that get? Okay, how old does that get? So what the beauty is, is yes, it's in diversity. It's in understanding, you know, people, place and things. It's, it's yes, creating infrastructure, creating, converting infrastructure, giving us another way to get to the, the stars. I mean, I, I'm sure there's ways, like, I'm sure somebody out there in the elite land have found a way to, I don't, maybe, I don't know. I have no idea. But to get to to a point where, where everybody, like the population, the lay population, is able to beam themselves to the stars without having to pay $500,000, you know, that hasn't existed yet because the, the, the population isn't ready for that kind of knowledge. And so at some point down the road, when there's less humans, and they figured out the whole Georgia Guidestones, you know, from seven billion, which is a whole lot. That's a whole lot of, a whole lot of bacteria in a petri dish to figure out what you can put together. Because that's what seven billion people are. It's like God's petri dish, and He had to figure out. Okay, well, you have this biochemistry here, this biochemistry here, this element, this, this, this gift here. Of all these, like these words that are gifts, and He's going to, and God is applying them all and building like you know, like Legos building a structure and then now this structure is like a Pinocchio it's a real boy or something right and so you have seven billion people that are basically part of like a huge petri dish all of us are okay even those that are playing with the petri dish are part of the petri dish because they want to exist too and then they are trying to because even the the immortals okay whoever they are they want an infrastructure they need somebody to keep their 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 houses built that the crops tended to they the, the immortals needed they need the worker bees but they also needed to incentivize the worker bees and so how do you do that well yes you know i mean there is a method to all this madness because there really isn't anything that it i couldn't imagine being on this earth with only 100 people you know and then what you fly around in your jet that magically appears gas <laughs> I mean, everything takes something. Everything takes energy. It takes innovation. It takes um, blood, sweat, and tears on some level. You can't just, it's not like bewitched. <laughs> and so, and so anyways, and so chemical resistance, let me bring it back to, you know, immortality and chemical resistance. So people are basically through the therapeutics and through all of biotech are, applied with chemical resistance for a very specified amount of time and then the body starts breaking down and so what if if those that are that can handle immortality and can handle the responsibility of immortality what if they 
just, you know, were resistant to the chemical resistant reagents to try to stop the evolution. Because that's what the vaccines are. They try to mitigate a mass amount of evolution, but they do apply, their evolution still there, but not everybody can handle it. And that's why you see people die because people cannot handle the evolution because the body is breaking down at, at an exponential level when there's so much activity in the universe. Okay. And so, um, so chemical resistance to evolution is yes, in the therapeutics, because I'm telling you, even if you did some kind of therapeutic that helps you transition to the new environment, there's no telling how you're going to react to the therapeutics. And so anyways, and so then this brings me to then the testimony about chronic weed smokers. Now, I've smoked weed my life, okay? Never been a chronic weed smoker, but yes, I mean, I can see why people smoke it because of all of the chaos inside. And so the only way they can escape the chaos within their body, mind, and spirit that has not been aligned correctly is to bring up the... Um, the dopamine and the serotonin and all those different uh, pleasurable hormones to then anesthetize them to where they can float through life as if nothing, there's no care in the world. And so that when you're, when you're bringing up serotonin and dopamine and all these different pleasurable hormones in your head on a continuous basis, and yeah, you're feeding yourself. Yeah, you're doing your stuff. So yes, you look at Willie Nelson, you look at the guy at the Phoenix Tears, I forget his name. He's the one that does the CBD oil. If you look at all the different, like Cheech and Chong, they were able to to great to produce movies, be in movies, be singers, be all like artisty and artsy fartsy and whatever. And yeah, they 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 can be like one of those shining stars, those bright shining stars in a supernova. But then you see Willie Nelson. He's de he's aging and degrading. Well, why is that? Well, what are you supposed to? Well, I'm telling you, when you're do when you're releasing hormones on such a level without replenishing those hormones. I don't care what it, whether it's weed, whether it's Cipro, whether it's, um, I don't know, an antibiotic, whether it is some kind of um, antidepressant, any kind of prescription drug or holistic remedy is going to suppress energy or it's going to bring up so much energy more than you're able to regenerate. And then guess what? When you are releasing more energy, energy than you're retaining and regenerating, then the, the vital organs shut down. And so chronic weed smokers on the J-Juice will eventually stop smoking weed. And so she says, testimony, not me. I'm a chronic weed smoker. I used it for everything and in everything. So you can imagine she's probably using, you know, all that stuff in the food, like the brownies and all that, which I've done. Oh, my God, no. I woke up this morning and had zero urge to smoke. I have not smoked all day. I don't even want to have or have any urge, want to or have any urge. I'm wondering, could the J-Juice be changing my brain chemistry? Oh, hell yeah, it is. You're now from a death trajectory where you're anesthetizing yourself out of existence. And now you are on a life trajectory where you're not resistant to evolution. Okay. Now there's going to be different reagents in your atmosphere and you might partake in the reagents out there through different vectors. But your body is now armed to live. It has not only the nutrients and the food supply, but it has the J-Juice to give you that energizing force to make sure everything in your body then coalesces with the actual intelligence of the design of your body. Okay? And then your body is not going to want to keep releasing all that dopamine all the time. And so I'm wondering, could the J-Juice be changing my brain chemistry? Or why do I have a sudden urge to stay away from weed? Because your body knows it's freaking deadly. I'm telling you, all the drugs out there, all the therapeutics, no matter how much they're being sold as a transition, which I get, those are all trying to make you chemically resistant to evolution. When you're like, I don't want to feel pain, I don't want to feel cancer, I don't want to feel this, I don't want to feel that, those are all the, the, the body's way to evolve. That's the body wanting to live, and then you keep trying to suppress or mitigate or lessen the evolution. But if you're going to evolve, you have to back it up with substance. My husband told me last night, he's like, you're, you're getting a little thick there, Jillian. I'm like, hell yeah. I got substance to me. And he says he loves it. I said, do you think I'm fat? He's like, no, you're not fat. You're just thick. And I'm like, yeah, because I have body to me. I'm not trying to look like a model in a fashion magazine. 
he's a, he's attracted to me. You know, he was attracted to me even when I was like at my worst, but of course he's my husband. He's going to be, or he'll say whatever he's going to say. But even now, you know, he's, he's always hot to trot though. I feel bad, you know, trying, you know, doing all that stuff with him, knowing that he's losing his life force and I'm retaining it, but that's his choice. He knows, you know, he knows the choices he has. He has the J-Juice if he wants to, and he can replenish and regenerate and not have to die from losing his life force on a whatever basis. But, but I'm telling you, you know, when you get substance behind your body, like I'm not fat, but I'm thick. I know, and I'm, and I feel great. I, I can handle all types of force. I can handle the electricity in the air. I can handle pretty much anything that allows for a stable environment on some level. Okay. And that's the, the, that's the, the point where I want you guys to get to is the fact that you're not held prisoner by the, by the societal expectations of looking a specific way. I'm not pr promoting that you be obese and I'm not promoting that you be under underweight where you're so skinny. There is a balance in between the two expectations in our society that we see and that you could still live indefinitely, but it does take responsibility. Immortality is responsibility. It takes a specific type of person and it takes a specific type of mindset and a lifestyle to be able to be responsible for keeping yourself alive. If not, if you're not responsible for not only yourself or for anyone else, and you really just don't care and want to put the responsibility on somebody else and you're always blaming somebody else, it's always somebody else's fault and you're all, you know, then yeah, you, you will then live the mortal life where, yeah, here you can, you know, here's all your distractions and your drugs and your therapeutics and, and all of your stuff and your alcohol and your weed. And here's this, but well, you'll still live a certain amount of time and we'll still extract the gifts from you, but you're going to supernova at some point. And, you, and they hope that you don't supernova enough to take people out with you. And so that's our system. And so we've been given a choice. But immortality is not some magical thing. It's not like, you know, we're dancing with unicorns down the street. We're, we're doing something so responsible by keeping ourselves alive. We keep our dogs alive. We keep ourselves alive. We keep our kids alive. We keep the people around us informed about what's going on. There's so much more responsibility with immortality than there is with mortality. Mortality, you don't have to be responsible for, for not much, except for going to work, you know, and, and making money so you can buy food and make sure that you prioritize. And then anything that goes wrong, you just go to your nearest doctor or holistic professional and they'll take something out relative to your ability to handle that taking something out or they'll harvest your energy or they'll anesthetize you with a therapeutic or a vector. And you have no responsibility until then you feel crappy to where you can't work. And then you get, you know, medical benefits or what do you call it? Uh, um, uh, shit, there's a name for it. Um, disability. And yeah, you'll get your, maybe you'll get welfare. Maybe you'll get something that's going to, it's going to basically say, okay, well, you can't work and you can't do this. So the government's going to have to support you. And that's really what our society is about is the fact that people take no freaking accountability for their life. They take no accountability for their health and they take no accountability for their station in life. And so immortality is really for those that take responsibility because it does take responsibility to handle the process to understand what it means, what pain means, to understand that everything where you're at in your life is because of the choices that you made. And now you're faced with the choice of life or death and you're choosing life and you're willing to take the responsibility and take the constituents in your environment and put them together to prolong your life. And you're willing to do that for anything that is under your care. My dog is amazing. She's doing amazing. She is like out of this world, the calmest thing ever. When you see dogs are a ball of freaking energy, it's because they have a biochemical uh, imbalance that is causing adrenaline. And that only lasts so long. Maybe it lasts 15 years, maybe it lasts 10 years until they get some kind of like, you know, cancer or some kind of other thing because the body is not retaining and it's releasing so much energy. And so when someone is full of anxiety or someone is always just like, you know, like a ball of fire all the time, eventually that's like the start. It's going to burn out because there's no balance. My dog is so calm. I'm like, my God. I mean, she, she like, she's just so calm. And then when she needs to be excited because she's alerted from her environment, like there's some stranger on the property or she sees something passing by 
And she's right there, ready, like Johnny on the spot, ready to go and kick somebody's butt. And so she knows how to go from like zero to 60. Okay. And so, um, and so anyways, and so that's, that's, that's the whole point of the JJs is the fact that you're able to tap into the power of your biochemistry at a moment's notice that you're not always bringing up. Like right now I'm, I drink coffee because when I'm writing my book and I'll smoke some cigarettes, when I'm writing my book, I'm trying to bring up biochemistry and different chemistry to just assist in this process. Not that I need the assistance, but I like it. I like the creativity. I like the edge. I like you know, just the different mixture of, of chemistry within my biochemistry because, you know, it's, it's cigarettes are growth and coffee is adrenaline and it's part of the, the biochemistry. And, and so that's how I can manipulate my own chemistry without turning to drugs or alcohol on a consistent basis. All right. And so, and so then when you look at the movies, then when you look at the movies, you look at evolution. Okay, every single movie is a formulaic of evolution from zero to hero all the time. And so you have the total capacity with the JJs from a zero to a hero. But what does that mean? It means that you don't have to freaking die in the end. You actually can overcome all of the 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 stress and the and the unmet expectations and all the the different, you know, obstacles that would get in the way of your intentions. And that, guess what? The end of the movie, you're a hero. You're still living on. You've overcome the obstacles. You've met all of your expectations. You've met most of your goals. And now there's more goals to be done because the life with 7 billion people and so much to learn. And we have our, the, the, the architects of our society who are amazing, who allow people who want to supernova and who want to just, you know, be the, the mortals in our study that are building the infrastructure, they allow them to have, to give them a little bit of antibiotics so they don't feel so pain, you know, during the evolution because they don't want to evolve, so that's fine. And so then they, the, the person, you know, will be rewarded with money or they're rewarded with some peace and they're rewarded with with still going to work and they have that work ethic. And so so our, our the architects of our society are saying, okay, we're going to give you two options. You could be immortal and live, yeah, your 70 years, great. You know, you'll, you have to work. And if you don't work, we'll put you on disability. But usually that's because you're out of terminally ill or you really can't work. And they'll give you that option. And we still need infrastructure. Thank God we have innovators who, are, who, who can invent certain things that we don't need to have a person go and do it. Because we can't really trust the whole population to be healthy enough to work because of their belief system and we can't overhaul the whole system and take away all the antibiotics because then everybody will go underground and get their antibiotics. And so you see how then immortality and from zero to hero and all that can be used at different levels and not immortality can be used at different levels. Immortality is like immortality. But as far as zero to hero, you can be a zero to hero type of thing you see in the movies where you just, you know, attain a specific goal. Or you could be a zero to hero to then, you know, go from what you thought was life but you were on a death trajectory to now indefinite life. And then now you, you are exemplifying that. And so I can't wait 10 years in the future. You know, there are people in my world. I mean, there's people in my world that are going to be come and go. And I get that because of the, of the nature of, of our life at this point. But at some point, the system will still give people the opportunity. So if they already have an infrastructure to help people get through their shortened lifespan and still be able to perform and work and do whatever. And then the system says, okay, you're immortal. You're being responsible with your immortality. That's great. We're going to allow you to live too and maintain and do whatever. And guess what? Both worlds can live symbiotically. They can, and, and the system figures out how to really quell the supernovas so they don't become like out of control. That's where the CIA comes in. That's where the FBI, that's where Facebook community standards comes in. They don't want somebody to supernova and take people down with them. Because even a word can spark people into activity that could hurt somebody. And so even Mark Zuckerberg understands that. Okay? So you have to see what immortality is. It's just, it's, it's a responsibility to maintain life indefinitely. And it does take 
it does take prioritizing. It does take a, an actual very responsible person. And it's not meant for everybody. I'll just tell you that right there. It is not meant for everybody. And that's okay. If you can coexist with a mortal and an immortal, and they can conjoin forces together, and if a mortal says, okay, I want to be immortal, they have that option. I mean, they're already going down a death road anyway, so it's not like anything different. But now they have a much better choice if they choose to. I, it's a win-win freaking situation. We have the antibiotics, yes, for, you know, for those that don't really want to live for very long. And they'll, they'll be applied very, very, you know, conservatively based upon Rockefeller medicine. And then you have the J-juice. Then you have the energy and the salt and the cabbage and the water and the fermentation. And then it takes a responsible person to maintain immortality. Because you still have to eat food. You still have to maintain roof over your head. Still got to keep clothes on your back. Still got to keep your dog alive. Okay, it's not like magic. It doesn't like appear. Immortality is just not appearing things. No, it's taking responsibility and prioritizing everything. And so that's how I see immortality. And that's why pot smokers who are on the J juice will finally have a life trajectory. They will finally take responsibility for their life and their children's lives and everyone's lives around them by giving people the opportunity. And so that's what I offer to you guys. And that's really how you need to see immortality. It's not magic. It's responsibility. It's major responsibility. And then dealing with those that don't understand. And then in 10 years, when you're showing your driver's license to some cop, who doesn't know you or Jilly Juice or maybe heard of Jilly Juice and you're born in 1974 and we're in 2050 and we still look like this. How do you explain that? <laughs> Google me, Mr. Cop. <laughs> Google Jilly Juice. Oh, you're the crazy people. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Bye.